Hi guys, it's Sherry. So today we are going to be making these fun little earrings. I want to do something a little bit different, um, something a little bit more out of my comfort zone. I don't usually do um, things along these lines. I'm more into real detailed things. And these are just a fun easy pair of earrings and they're perfect for a beginner they're perfect for children or just a everyday let's have fun type of earring and you'll see i have little glass pieces here for the leaves and then i put little um, stones in the flowers i textured the back and i ended up doing resin on the top to kind of just bring it out a little bit so let's get started i'm going to show you step by step how to create these exact pair of earrings all right guys so to start out with this project i use mint green primo clay and i rolled it out on my thickest setting but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to double up on this so I have my rectangle here and I just got to kind of make sure that I have enough clay. So one, two, I think if I do that in half, I should have hopefully plenty of clay to do two of them. One, two, yeah, okay. So I'm going to get my roller and I'm just going to kind of roll these a little bit to make sure they're a little mushed together. I don't want to make them too thin. I want to keep the thickness there. I also want to make sure that I don't get a bubble. So I'm going to get my saran wrap and I'm going to... There, that's more even. All right. So I'm going to just cut out two of these. Okay, put that off to the side. We don't need that. want to take this and just press just a tad bit okay now the back side will look like that I like that. All right, these will all be sanded down. So I'm not gonna worry about the edges too much right now. So I'm gonna get one of my tiles, okay? I'm going to put those down. And then I'm going to take my green clay that I had left over and I'm gonna put it down onto probably about my fourth or fifth thin is set in because I don't want my flowers to be thick so that's about the thickness that I'm going to do I'm going to take my saran wrap once again I'm going to set it here and then I have this little puncher I'm just going to do two of these. I'm just going to kind of, oops, 
do the edges make sure they're nice and smooth I want to do two other ones I have clay all over my hands here from my project before <laughs> So this is the one I'm going to use this time. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to get one of these tools just to kind of clean up the middles here. All right. The rest look good. And now I'm actually going to use a little bit of this green. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use brown. I got this burnt umber. And I'm going to use brown for the stem. Just because I think the brown and the mint green would look nice together. So let me put these off to the side right now. And I'm going to roll to make a snake. And I want a real thin snake. I'm going to take this and just go right up. And I'm just going to cut that right off. There we go. And we're going to go on this side as well. There we go. Do the same thing. These earrings are simple, very simple to make. So now I'm going to go this way. They do not have to be exact. And then I'm going to stick this one here. There we go. Now I'm going to take my little flowers that I punched out and I have this mauve mica powder do not get mica powder on the back of these so make sure they're nice and pressed down onto your workspace because it will make it hard to stick to the clay so we just want to get the top part of it if you would happen to get mica powder on the underneath, you can use the glue, um, the Sculpey adhesive glue, to put a, just a dot underneath to help hold it into place. Make sure you're getting the edges. And I'm actually going to do a different color for the other one. I'm going to go with a orange because I want these all to be really bright. I want everything to kind of pop. Now carefully oops, lift these up. Make sure we didn't get ah, too much on the back. I might just put a little bit of glue on the back of these anyway because I got more on the back than I really want it. And I want to make sure that they stay down completely. Come on. So this is the oven baked clay. I'm going to actually just use this. And I'm going to put just a little dot on. Use my finger to kind of go around all the edges. Make 
try real hard not to move it too much because you don't want the green to get this mica powder on it. This mica powder really just goes wherever it wants. Okay. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on my finger here. Spread that and carefully just set that into place. There we go. All right, let me wipe my hands off. And I'm going to put little gems in the middle there. So I think let's do. Okay. So I'm going to just put a little tiny dot. You almost feel like that was way too much that came out super thick. And we could do that here. Put your glue on the table and then just lift it up. Don't do what I just did because now I have too much glue on that one. Okay, there you are. Mm -hmm. Come on, Oh, come on, come on. There we go. Let's push this down a little bit. Okay, now I want to try to clean up some of the glue. There we go. All right, happy with that. And I decided for the leaves, I got this crackle glass and I want to see if I can make leaves out of it. So let's get the green. So let me just put a few pieces here. Oops, that was a lot more than I needed. But so now I'm going to put glue on my table here because that will work a lot better than me trying to dump it onto my piece. All right. I'm going to get my little dotting tool. And I know I want my leaf to be right around this area. So I'm just going to put some glue here. Kind of in leaf form, I guess you could say. And I want to put it a little thick because I want to make sure that those glass pieces have something to grab onto and make sure they stick properly because I'm not going to push them down into the clay. So let's get one of these and see if we can start forming it into a leaf. Okay. 
Okay, I like that. That looks neat. And I think I might do a little tiny bit on that side as well. There's a couple small ones over here. So let's do, let's see here. Oops. Got one here. One here. Okay. I like that. That's pretty neat. Let's do the same thing on this side. This time I'm going to put it up here. That worked out nicer. All right. Let's see if we can get our pieces on here. Let's do one here. I'm going to try to slide this down, but it's not going it's staying there so we will work around it okay And I am debating on if I want to texture this before I put it in the oven, like kind of like just a little area. So I'm thinking I'm going to do that. Just give it a little texture look. And I feel like this, by doing this, this is going to help push everything kind of in place and keep it where it should be. Okay, now I'm going to get my hole puncher. And then I'm going to punch my holes for my earrings. And just so you know, these things fill up with clay. Pretty, You can see this one's completely full of clay. I took an old necklace cord and I just chopped it. And now... This actually fits real nice and you could just push all that old clay out and it just cleans it and makes it so much easier than fighting sometimes to get the hole properly punched. So now I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to go right in the middle. Okay. And do the same thing here. Always make sure you're not doing getting too close to the edge. And then I'm just going to kind of flatten this. I'm going to flatten my edges. That'll help with sanding. Sometimes when you do that, you don't have to sand too much. Okay. So now I'm going to place this in my toaster oven for a half hour to 45 minutes. And I'm going to bake it at 275 because my clay is primo. So make sure you're following whatever your clay says. Um, and then when we are finished, or I'm sorry, and when everything is baked and cooled off, we'll come back and we will assemble everything and finish up the last bit that we need to do. See you then guys. All right guys, so my pieces are out of the oven. They're completely baked, cooled off. And I really think these are a fun pair of earrings. I, I really, they came out better than I really expected to be quite honest. I wasn't sure when I was um, playing around with them and kind of getting this little idea in my head. I wasn't sure how it was gonna come out, but these are really fun. So with these, I'm actually going to use some UV finish on them. 
And I really like the Tiny Pandora Deep Shine because it is easily brushed on and it dries quickly. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna put some on here and then I'm just going to brush it on. Keep it very simple. And this will help protect anything like the little glass that's up here. That's going to help protect, keep it on. And I always worry sometimes with like here with my stems, I'm always worried like, okay, you know, yeah, it's on there, but will it chip off or something if I'm dropping my earrings and with the UV, you know, you're always nice and secure with everything. I'm going to right here. I like to use my tool to hold it so I'm not getting all this UV on, or not UV, all this resin on my hands. So I'm going to get the sides, I'm going to go right over my stones. When it comes to the mica powder and the resin, don't brush it over the mica powder. Just kind of dab it because it will kind of run and smear all over your piece. And you don't want to get the mica powder all over the mint green because then it won't look as nice. Okay, let me put this off to the side for a moment. I don't want to do my UV on this because then that resin gets hard and it's hard to get off of my mat. And I like to bake all my pieces on this mat. So as I do this, I'm just going to lift the piece off and then I will wipe down my mat. Remember to dab on this, especially the red, if you're doing the mauve dab over it because it will spread and it's going to get all over your green. Okay. Make that off. If you are concerned about bubbles, in your resin, you could take a lighter and just go right over it and that will take out any bubbles that may have formed while you're placing it. Okay, so now I'm going to put this under my UV light and then when we're finished with that, we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. So now the front side is completely cured. So now I'm going to do the back and I like the back, how we textured it with the stamp. I was going to rub some paint over this, but I really kind of wanted it to stay plain. I thought it would look nice that way. I mean, I'm sure rubbing paint over it would look nice as well. So if you want to do that, you can do that. But I just kind of wanted to keep it a little more plainer than my usual pieces. So this I'm just going to do a thin coat over this one. Oh, and before, when I took these out, I did sand all my edges. I'm sorry I didn't show you that step. I just kind of was... Um, doing that while I was waiting for my other pieces to kind of finish and I decided to do some sanding while I was doing that so definitely sand your edges before there we go close that up I just want to wipe my mat or my area so that doesn't get hard and gross and now we're going to put this back in the UV or under the light I mean and 
just kind of want to make sure I'm not getting the resin in these holes. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put this under quick. All right, so now they are completely sealed, front and back. And I want to make sure my holes, where's my little, are completely open. All right. And then I'm going to get my jump ring. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna open that all the way up. Put that in there. And I want to show you something. So our earring hooks usually come where it's completely flat like this. I carefully twist it so this piece now is facing in the opposite direction. So can you see the difference here? If you keep it this way, your earring is going to lay this way. You actually want your earring to lay this way so it lays on your ear properly. Now normally what I would do is I would just add an extra small jump ring to this but I kind of just want to leave very little there. So I'm going to show you how I twisted that. And you got to be careful with it because if you, oops, if you don't do it properly, let me get my you will break it. Let me close this all the way. This is a strong jump ring. There we go. I'm just going to turn that that way. See, now it's laying properly. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to carefully take this and just turn it very carefully because if you turn it too much what you're going to do is you're going to bend this just a little too much and it will snap off so you just want to carefully bend it make sure it's straight and now it will lay flat okay Open that, get that on, and close that. Let's turn, get that there. And there you go, guys. There is a fun pair of earrings. I think these are just so fun. They're going to be adorable just to wear with a simple dress or a cute pair of jeans and i hope you guys enjoy this as much as i did making these and if you did like this please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe and i will see you guys next time thanks guys bye